Welcome to our newest web series on uh, the NV Auto YouTube channel. I'm Dove, this is Riley. Hey. Riley pilots this Formula Drift 2JZ powered Toyota 86. And we are now in our 2019 season reprep. So we are going through everything. The end of the season had a little contact with the wall. Just a little smidge. <laughs> so we're new subframes and some new body panels and refreshing things. And we just want to give you and everybody on the internet a look into what goes into these cars because drifting is not just airing up your tires and sliding around a track like lot, some people yeah. believe, a lot of people believe. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. So we're gonna try and break it down. We're gonna call it drift biology, I guess. I don't know. Sure, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Anyways, we're gonna start today with the quick change rear differential because we start at the back of the car with our reprep right now. So we're making new rear subframe for the quick change. We just wanna show everybody how it works. All right, so with the quick change, Riley, why, what does, it, what does it do for you as a driver? So as a driver, it allows you to fine tune the rear wheel speed and uh, kind of the final drive ratio for every different track. So each track has its own characteristics. The corners are different sizes, different lengths. The run up is different. So you need to get the car set up tailored to each specific circuit. Some are very similar and some are vastly different. For instance, Atlanta to uh, St. Louis are 100% different. Atlanta is very low speed, uh, lots of small, tight corners. St. Louis is huge, long straightaways, lots of wide open throttles. So, instead of having to have 10 or 12 differentials in the trailer or taking apart ring and pinion sets, the quick change allows you to change them quickly, hence the name. <laughs> so, with just a, you know, 15, 10, maybe 10 minutes track side, you can have the gear ratio changed, you know, 10 or 12 times in a practice session and uh, really allows you to get the car set up perfect so that you're not constantly trying to shift from like second to third across the gate or you, you can almost eliminate some shifting altogether, you know, you make fourth just a little shorter and it allows you to uh, you know not have to do that extra downshift or you can start in second there's a lot of stuff you can do to make it that much easier to drive the car so ultimately you're trying to keep the shifts minimal so like you run up to your initiation point and almost want to be in the gear that you're going to drive the whole course in. yeah in a perfect world if you could get the car into whatever gear you want to run the whole course in before you initiate it's great because every shift is an opportunity to make a mistake so yeah. the more of those you can remove the more you can focus on hitting the clipping points. Or if you're chasing, it's way nicer to not have to worry about constantly shifting the car to try and follow somebody. So as many points of error as you can remove from each run, the more likelihood you'll be able to put together a really solid one. So like Irwindale, since it's the last event, it's probably mm -hmm. freshest in your head, even though yes. it's a few months ago. What was, how did it work in the car? Like you launched, you left the line, first, second, so in, in Irwindale, we had it set up, I can't remember the ratio, but uh, fourth gear on the big bank, and then third gear on the second inner bank, which is fine because the downshifts are easy. You basically just slap the shifter and it'll go down to third. So you launch the car first, second, third, fourth, initiate it in, run the bank, transition, and just as you get into the second um, inner lower bank, down to third, and then you're good until the end of the course. <laughs> Once 
once you initiate, you shift once the whole course, which makes it real. And it's a downshift, which makes it even easier while you're decelerating. So that's a perfect setup because, you know, for instance, you had fourth is too tall, so you have to go down to third and then maybe second and then up to third again. It makes it a mess. So you want to have it set up perfectly for each track. And because you can change so many different ratios so quickly, you can have different setups for every track and it doesn't cost a fortune either to have all the gear sets in a trailer. Right. And then some other situation we encountered this year, fourth gear failed in the car yes. and we just changed the ratio so we didn't use fourth. We yes. Just... So <laughs> in, in a situation like that where you may not have, you know, four or five transmissions in the trailer or you don't have time, time to change, yeah, the, time to change, to change the transmission it, yeah. where you say, okay, four, something's wrong with fourth, we can't use fourth, do the math and then figure out what gear you need to run to have third in the same ballpark. It's not ideal, but it'll get you through an event instead of having to, you know, kind of bow out of competition because you can't keep the car going. Yeah. All right, let's, I'm gonna not tear the whole thing down, but just show everybody how the back end works. It's cool, you gotta see how this thing works. All right, so normally this is in the back of the car, mm -hmm. but people can see how quickly we can get to the gears. Cover off. And there they are. You can see the two big gears in there. These large bearings in the cover, which the shafts ride on. So the ratio we have in there now is a 532. And I can't remember why we did that. Oh, that was for the SEMA demo. Yes. We had only one or two gears. Yeah. So at this point, there's you know a whole list of different gears you can use. Here it is. You have all these ratios to check, cha cha you know, choose from. So right now we label all of them so we know. So this is a five three. Uh, if you have this, if you took this gear off and swap them around. and you put the little one on top. <clears throat> and the big one on the bottom. You can go from a 5.3 to a 3.1 with the same gear set. So each, each gear set, you buy these as pairs, each gear set that you buy is actually two different ratios. So Riley, why don't you explain how it works, like how the power delivery part yep. goes. So basically, drive shaft from the engine comes in, input flange, and on traditional differential, this would normally go to a pinion gear, to the ring gear, that's it. So on these, there's a long shaft that extends all the way underneath the uh, carrier or spool, whatever you want to call it, to the lower shaft, and then the gear transmits that to another shaft with the pinion gear on this side of the ring gear which allows you to be able to modify the um, torque multiplier between the two shafts quickly instead of having to disassemble all this, change your pinion gear, change your ring gear set. So that's kind of how it all works, which is also what gives this thing its huge size. Not only does it have a ring gear the size of a pumpkin, but <laughs> it, it's got a 10 inch ring gear. Yeah, 10 inch. So that's, that's why it handles so much abuse. Huge bolt, everything's super massive, heavy duty casings. Um, but it also has to allow for the shaft to go completely underneath and around the whole kind of unit. Uh, we've also upgraded this one. We've changed these output shafts here. These are supplied to us by RTS. The factory ones that come with a different made of aluminum. These are made out of stainless steel, so they can take a lot, a lot more abuse. And a lot of abuse they receive. Yeah, I can promise you that. So the other thing with this diff is it eats a lot of horsepower. So typically you have one ring gear. This technically has two, right? Yeah. Because there's multiple reduction things happening. So if you like hook this up to like a hundred horsepower car or like Riley's sweet little truck. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah, I mean, you probably have zero just horsepower. Just to get enough effort to turn that, it like takes a large amount of effort for me. And this doesn't load it up with oil or any other driveline yeah. loss right now. But that is a horsepower sponge for yeah. sure. 
So as you saw me change the gears before, so that's as hard as it is. You put the gears in, slide them on, slide the cover back on. Put the bolts on, and at this point, somebody will be at the reservoir on the top of the car, already starting to refill whatever's come out of it. Crazy thing is how much oil it holds. It's really not yeah. that much for the size of the diff. You yeah. think it would be a ton of oil. Yeah, this holds about one liter. Yeah. It's not all that much. And for all of you who want to put these in a street car, because these gears are straight cut, the amount of noise that comes from this unit is unbelievable. Like, it sounds like an RC, like a really big RC. Yeah, it car. sounds like a huge RC car. So even when driving this car, it's not really the engine I can hear. It's all the gear wine from this and the gearbox. Everything is straight cut, which means it's strong, but it is not in any way quiet in any sort of form. All right, thanks for watching our first episode of Drift Biology. We'll see if that catches on or not. Yeah, we'll see, whatever. We'll see how it goes. But comment below, ask questions, whatever you need to know about this stuff. We're gonna try and give you more and more information, both from the technical side and the driving aspect, yep. and what it takes to compete in Formula D. Subscribe. <laughs>